The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Frankly Speaking. I'm your host today, Frank Zaberek, and I'm really excited. Um, the two guests I had, I, I've got today, I was supposed to have last year, but I caught them when they were both going on their summer vacations. <laughs> so I know, because uh, since it's, this is about like worshiping God in a national pandemic, and the pandemic is still going on, we're going into our second calendar year of it, I thought I'd catch them now before they go on their summer vacations. <laughs> my first guest I'm, is no stranger to my show. He's the pastor of my church, which is Merrimack Valley Baptist Church in Merrimack. He's Pastor Greg Odeorn. Greg, hi, Pastor Greg, how are you doing today? Good, Frank. Thank you for having me again. And my second guest, he's an uh, assistant pastor. Um, he's He's been with the Merrimack Valley Baptist um, Church for quite a while. Almost 10 years. And um, among other things um, he does, he's a, a sort of assigned with this pandemic stuff, like uh, going over like the social distancing and the mask and uh, all that kind of good stuff for the church. And his name is uh, Dave G. Dave, how are you doing today? Doing okay. Thanks for having me, Frank. Okay, no problem. And I guess, um, so last, what was it, like 13, 14 months ago, <laughs> When um, the president, well, then President Trump officially announced the national pandemic, um, you're, you had to sort of modify the Merrimack Valley Baptist Church for the foreseeable future. It looked like it was going to be less than a year. There was, everybody was saying the second spike was going to be around like November, December of last year. But I guess, I don't know if the second spike ever came. It's... <laughs> it's still it's here. a funny yeah. story. Yeah. So um, anyway, so first of all, I guess when you started, you couldn't have had, you had to have all live streaming. Dave, I'll start with you since you're sort of like the expert pandemic for the church. Yeah. Well, and you can chime yeah. in if you. Okay. okay. You. Yeah, no, you. you know, as we started off, it was a complete stay at home order. So we did transition to complete remote um, with our YouTube channel that uh, we stream our services on and then um, just kind of tried to expand, you know, because we do our morning services, but then we added other places where people could connect Wednesday night and things. Greg did a lot from his home, his yeah. table at home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> yeah, it was interesting. But you just, okay, one thing about the uh, Merrimack Valley Baptist Church, in fact, I think you just started doing that during the, when the pandemic started, was the morning, um, weekday morning prayer services right. and the lunch, weekday lunchtime Devotional, devotionals. Devotionals, right. Yeah, we started that um, soon after uh, the, the closure, uh, and then uh, people needed, they needed community, right? spiritual community. And so we were trying to figure out creative ways because we're at the stay-at-home order, and, and so we were doing everything streaming, and so just to get, and we were, we, it was all new. Dave and I were talking about this earlier. This was all new. People, people were nervous. They didn't, they were, some people were afraid. And so we just wanted to be a voice of, of peace and calm into their lives and no better way than bringing the word of God into their life. So uh, we started a, a 6.30 Monday through Friday prayer time. And, and every, every day there's anywhere from, you know, about 20 people, probably 25 people. And then the devotions, uh, we do a, uh, an afternoon lunchtime devotional, so if, at twelve thirty to one, and it has about the same number of people that join, and and we and it's been a wonderful experience. We've actually had people uh, join or at least come to our church. They haven't necessarily officially joined our church, but they have. Uh, they found us uh, during the pandemic. 
I would assume there's not too many ministers from other churches that do the same thing you do. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> sure, every day. Every day, yeah. maybe not. Yeah. I don't know, but I know I do have some friends in in the ministry community that were, you know, they're doing similar things with streaming services. Uh, I I have a friend that was streaming a devotional time. I don't know if he's still doing it or not, but we're still doing it. Well, so when you say friends in the, in the like the the religious mm -hmm. uh, community, uh, Merrimack Valley Baptist Church is what they call an independent Baptist church, right? So you're not with the Southern um, Baptist uh, Convention. No, type we, deal. we don't fall underneath uh, any any hierarchy. Not, even the churches in the Southern Baptist Convention, the churches are independent. What they choose oh. to do in the Southern Baptist Convention is they cooperate uh, in the area of missions and a couple other areas. Uh, so there's a lot of wisdom in that, but they they are independent, autonomous local churches that choose to be part of the convention. Oh. We are just not, we're just an independent Baptist church that uh, we are not under any association. So is there such an animal, for example, as the, um, I, I don't know, the um, Protestant Ministers Association of New Hampshire? I just made that up. Oh. <laughs> Starting something, right? Yeah. 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 No. <laughs> Started fresh on your show. So there's no networking. Well, then again, you have, other than David, you've got about a half a dozen assistant uh, associate pastors. We, uh, we currently have uh, six total pastors, myself included. We have six pastors on staff, uh, each uh, with a different area of responsibility. And, uh, and and we are I know numerous of our of the pastors get together with other pastors in the oh. area. I mean, New England's been prayed for for many many years. The gospel would come into New England, and you know this has such a rich heritage, a religious heritage. Uh, but in terms of the gospel, you know, coming forth, if really church has been praying for New England for generations, probably. So there's more churches up here than there used to be, even when I lived here 30 years ago. And so there's a number of pastors we can fellowship with. I don't know if I told you this on the last time I had you on my show. But well, before I had Frankly Speaking, I was with the Access Nashua mm -hmm. with the church I was with. Yeah. And they kind of went belly up, but that's a story for another day. And uh, they, um, they um, what was I going to say? I lost my train of thought. It must have been a lie. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but to have, like, networking. Well, then again, you could probably network through Facebook. If you know other ministers, you could probably join their Facebook page or something like that. Sure. Or the, the Merrimack Valley Church also has a Facebook page itself. Right. Right. So you can join that. Um, yeah, I would say we probably we're more connected, you know, personally than what an association would be. There are you know, various associations in New Hampshire. I get some of their email updates. Uh, one of them is has been very um, consistent and active just about COVID issues and, mm -hmm. and addressing questions and issues that have come up. So, you know, there's there's been strength in that. So to the best of your knowledge, you wouldn't know of any other churches in New Hampshire that went belly up in the over COVID. No. I, I don't. I don't know. If, Again, through personal. Oh, okay. Personal, yeah. I, I think, in many ways, uh, churches have been strengthened. Uh, not not just because people are fearful of a pandemic, but the, when community was taken away from them in different ways, the church community came closer together. So um, you know, people and and having an online presence. Is, is that has what, had to help it, too? It, it helped numerous people. There, uh, there's a lot of loneliness out there. There's a lot of you know, and, and now that we're so far into it, it's the new normal right now. So I think a lot of people have probably settled in to the new normal. Uh, but the new normal always changes. So, <laughs> so, so we'll see how the, goes. the members of our church, well, the members of our church that were seventy and older, yeah, are they computer active? I would assume not. I, oh. many, are. Uh, many are. Many There's are. There's a few that aren't, but I would say probably the largest majority of them either have a tablet or a computer or something like that. Some folks got more connected now through the pandemic. Oh, yeah. Their kids would set up something for them so they could, and, you know, FaceTime. And in the kids. beginning, there was, uh, they would call the church office and, and the folks in our office would help them learn how to connect. They'd yeah. walk them through the connection process, you know, so they could... 
And and there's I won't use names, but I mean there's one uh, wonderful lady in our office who had a short list of people, and she called them to make sure they were able to get connected. Yeah, incredible. Yeah, it was wonderful. Incredible. So um. Okay, so uh, getting out, uh, I'll bounce, probably bounce back to this. But biblically speaking, now there, I think we talked talk to you before, David, about this. There's really nothing in the Bible that talks about, like, um, they talk about plagues, but they don't talk about a pandemic. Not something like a flu type thing where somebody gets sick that they die or something of that nature. Well, I, I, I think probably that could be uh, fall under what you find in the scriptures about where it says like pestilence, that would be like diseases things. And that term uh, isn't necessarily specific in a medical sense, like we would use it, but it would just be a disease that would be, could be lethal, um, at least something that's widespread. Um, if you're, if you're tying it, you know, like specifically to, that idea of the end end times, end of days type thing. I think you have to get really careful with that. You have to be really careful with that because um, often when we look in scripture, people look to the book of Revelation and there are some very specific bowls and trumpets and some of those would have to do with disease. But um, one thing you have to recognize, those as I as I would understand it and read it, and Greg, you can chime in, but they kind of come one right after mm -hmm. the other in such a way that there's no, no question this has to be God because right. it's one, you know, it's one oh. thing after another after another, and it just doesn't happen by chance, right? Even to the point where, as I recall, toward the book of Revelation, people are saying, we want the mountains to fall on us right. because we'd rather have that than have to submit to God. That's the level of, of plague and, yep. and um, uh, turmoil yep. that's laid out in the book of Revelation. So there's no question. For right now, um, I mean, certainly Jesus talked about, he said, you know, between the time that he was here and the end of time that there would be wars, rumors of wars, pestilences, um, nation rising against nation. And somewhat, you, you have to study that out, but somewhat that's life in a sin-cursed world, right. right? He's just saying, yeah, these are the effects that are going to take place. Um, so to, to specifically say in this case, like COVID, is that foretold in the Bible? Um, I don't know if I could say that it's specifically identified in the Bible other than where Jesus says, this is what happens in a sin-cursed world. Oh, okay. Well, one one question I'm sure ne and, and, um, nobody from the church asked you guys. If it was, it was probably me who asked you guys. <laughs> so, the um, Pan, COVID-19, is that an act of Satan or an act of God Almighty that we have it now? It kind of goes hand in hand, hand in glove, I should say, with what Dave was just saying in terms of the the... If the question is set up to be, you know, is it Satan or is it God? And Dave's answer that he just gave was, it's, a, it's living in a sin-cursed world. So um, COVID-19, I'm not going to draw, and Dave, this is where you can chime in, but I'm not going to draw a straight line from Satan to COVID-19, and I'm not going to draw a straight line from God to, to COVID-19. I will say in Genesis 3, when the fall of man happened, and the different curses that were pronounced upon man, woman, uh, serpent, and land, right? One of the right. things that the land was infected is uh, sin Sin affected every aspect of creation. So uh, creation is, is yearning to be redeemed. And so uh, when we have sin in the world, we have disease. When we have sin in the world, we have violence. When we have sin in the world, we have uh, all the negative things that you would want to, to list off. We can tied directly to sin being present in the world. But I can't say that it's a directly tied, that COVID-19 is directly tied to a direct act of God or a direct act of Satan. Does that okay. make sense? And you wouldn't say the same thing about 9-11? Um, no, no. And 9-11, and, uh, I'll let you give your answer because I like your answer. <laughs> yeah, so. well, oh, okay. I think that one, the blame is on the men who climbed into an airplane and flew them into buildings and 
yeah. and other places, right? It, in the sense of they made that choice yeah. to do that, to harm others. Yeah. In this case with COVID-19, we don't know that, right? And, and, and so um, when you look in scripture, you know, as you look at Romans, uh, what we're talking Romans 5? Five, 5. Yeah, where it talks about that creation has been submitted to futility because God wants to bring the hope of redemption. Right. If everything was fine and dandy, it would be very hard for us to look outside of ourselves. If I'm comfortable, I'm who comfortable. Needs, I'm who not needs looking. God? Right. I'm not looking for something <laughs> yeah. outside of myself. And so when I'm put in situations that show me uh, and remind me how little control I have, that's when I start to say, okay, I need help, right? And no person can truly bring that to me. Yep. Even, even when you're thinking about um, the question, okay, is it God or Satan? And many people, I'm sure, have asked that question, right? Because you, you wonder. Yeah. But that reveals something about our created being, right? We're created to think beyond the here and now. We are everlasting beings, right? So why do we look to assign blame? Because we know inherently, we know, okay, there's more to this than just the here and now. But that's where, as Greg pointed out, you know, we live in a sin-cursed world. And that's the what Romans 5 talks about, the futility, the groaning. Yeah, and then also the Luke passage we were talking about earlier, where it was a Luke 13? Yeah. I think it was Luke 13, where uh, Jesus is speaking to people, and, and uh, he references, you know, you know, those individuals that were killed by that wall falling. You know, were they worse sinners than anyone else? And, his, and the expected answer was no, right? I mean, it, it happened because of what Dave's explaining is, is the, the reality that, that uh, bad things happen in a sin-cursed world. So in the Old Testament, for example, the flood that initiated Noah's Ark or the uh, a fire and brimstone over Sodom and Gomorrah, yeah. that was 100% all God. That was all God. And that how was, do we know that? Because he it's, said it was Yeah, he told us. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he said it was nah, Okay. Frank thought it was his turn, yeah, right. chance to yeah. answer a question. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's all right. Yeah, that's all yeah, right. That's, good. And that's where where we come. You know, there are hurricanes, there are floods, there are fires today, right? Um, think even think of diseases, the Spanish flu of 1918, right? Uh, bubonic plague of the mid 1300s, uh, swine flu, avian flu, right? You have to be really careful to start claiming things for God or Satan that God doesn't say, you know, we, we see in the book of Job, right? God okay. did allow Satan to attack Job and Satan did his best to make it look like God, right? But, but in that sense, we know because God Told clearly us. claims it. God clearly shows what's going on for the judge, like the flood, like you mentioned, right? God specifically said, this is me. me. In this case, God's not doing that. So we have to be really careful um, because of those three, three dynamics where there's, there's just the reality of living in a sin-cursed world where accidents happen, but also people make terrible choices, yeah. right? But Satan is, is an active agent and God is an active agent. How that all works out, I have to be really careful about assigning Blame, blame and assumption and unfortunately some people some preachers just rush right down yeah. and say it was this or that and and i think we have to be careful because again we can miss what romans 5 is talking about the futility of it right because we all want let's just get this pandemic over with right amen somebody needs to stop <laughs> this thing. but what are we learning yeah mankind is struggling to stop it we've got a lot of promising you know, vaccines on the you know on the horizon here, and people are getting vaccinated. Praise God for that, yeah. right? I, I, I'm so thankful for that. But again, it's not like we can just flip a switch, and it get and, and at some point we get frustrated and say, "Why doesn't somebody just stop this?" Well, that's the futility of Romans five, so that we do recognize the effects of sin, and that we need a savior, and that's Jesus Christ. Yeah. So Merrimack Valley Baptist Church, you're 
I mean, financially, you're still doing great. Yeah. You're not in a position where you, the red flags are f flying and saying, boy, we might have to close down soon if this doesn't clear up. We, we tend to operate in a conservative fashion. All right. We, we try not to, to depend on uh, I mean, we have we run a budget every year, but we run a conservative budget. And and then honestly, you only pay you only spend what you have. Right. All so, right. So we we've had uh, but God's people have been have been very faithful to continue to uh, tithe and give offerings. Uh, we've been able to bless other ministries through this pandemic because of the giving of God's people. I, I give all the glory to God for all the giving that's been taking place. He's doing it through individuals at Merrimack Valley and many other churches. And uh, so it is a blessing. And I'm, I'd be glad to praise God for the fact that we are not, uh, we're not closing doors or not paying bills. No, God has provided uh, every step of the way. Are most of your prayer requests, because you take prayer requests all the time, right. like in, in the church services and the um, morning devotion, I mean, the lunchtime devotion, yeah. morning prayers, taking prayer requests, are most of them pande pandemic-related prayers? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, they're, no, they're not. I mean, initially... There were families who were unsure about their employment. Yeah. There was concerns over the elderly and people with uh, compromised immune systems. And certainly were, there were definitely prayers along those lines. But for the most part, our prayer time is, is uh, focused on, in a couple different areas, mainly family, uh, health, uh, and then I would say spiritual, spiritual, um, the spiritual focus. Uh, we have one gentleman that is consistently just praying for revival. Uh, in in uh, in New England, right? That, that that and and that's whenever you look at the revivals that have taken place in, in history. I mean, there's usually uh, an impetus for it, an initiation of it, and and oftentimes, you know, it's what Dave was saying is when times become difficult, people start looking outside themselves for answers, and and that's the ultimate answer is Jesus Christ. So that's that's uh, that's our hope is that. We're not thankful for the pandemic. I'm not thankful for it. I'm thankful that got some good things have happened through the pandemic and through this time together. We've learned a little bit more about what it means to be a church. Uh, we've learned a little bit more about what it means to be a brother or sister in Christ. We we have understood what it means to be a better neighbor to our to our community. I mean, there's a lot of things that have transpired that would not have transpired without the pandemic. Oh, that, that's what I meant to ask you. How many um, has there, to the best of your knowledge, has there been any members of Merrimack Valley Baptist Church who were sick with COVID nineteen? Or oh, well, I know, I know, there's members who have been sick. Uh, yeah, so there's definitely been people who have been sick. No one, to our knowledge, has, has uh, passed has passed away. Uh, and you know, some ex like extended family, not the yeah, age, right. But like oh, maybe a grandparent or yep. a parent or something like that. Yeah in another area who's passed away, but yeah, I don't know. But not a direct member of um, Definitely here. Definitely folks who, who have it contracted it themselves and, and really experienced the, the spectrum of symptoms. Yeah. Some people who mild and quick recovery and others who have dealt with, you know, long-term fatigue um, yeah. and, and long-term symptoms. Yeah. You know. Okay. So when th this came down like around like 13, 14 months ago, yeah. when Trump declared a national pandemic, did you assign David as the, like the COVID-19 um, NCOIC? How did that happen, David? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I did. One of David's strengths is uh, he's a detail-oriented person. I noticed, yeah. And, and really, uh, he has... He's done a lot of behind the scenes stuff for years, I think. It's, I think it was a natural thing that kind of fell to him. Um, but I, my, com my comfort level was that he had the history to know the people. He had the history of knowing the, the church body, you know, uh, and how things have, have worked and the systems that were in place. Be being relatively new, I was, I'd only been at the church one year when this all started. Um, but no, he, so I handed the ball to him and he has run with it. And, and so, yeah, there's nothing that takes place in any uh, area of our ministry that, that I don't at least consult him when it comes to, 
when it comes to COVID related things. So when you like set up the seating in the church and stuff like that, does somebody like from the um, Merrimack, the Merrimack um, um, building department, mm. the building of uh, inspector come down and like, cons you know, talk with you on how it should be set up or. Yeah. Uh, they've never uh, come out to physically inspect that I know of. Maybe they've attended the service and. Oh, Praise God if they have, you know, I mean, they're. Oh, like, then if they saw like well. some hanky panky, or you were. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, we, we've never had, as far as like a uh, an interaction where they wanted to come and say, "Okay, you must do this," or "We're here to inspect you." Um, it's always, I mean, it's always been. Uh, you know, we've tried to, you know, be mindful, and make wise choices regarding the safer at home guidance from the state of New Hampshire, and you know, when that came out, I remember going down to the multi-purpose room, the large, large room that we use as our auditorium and, you know, measuring out distances on the floor and, and how can we do, you know, aisles so that people don't to have to pass in front of each other. Um, all of those type of details, because, you know, certainly as we came into it, you know, what it, in my heart, you know, it's like this can have a significant impact on people, you know, in the sense of we, you don't know how one person's going to, respond to COVID infection versus another. Now, we don't want that to make life grind to a halt, Yeah, but there are wise, caring ways that we can move forward with that. So I'd say we've always had a great um, relationship or interaction. Um, and as we were talking, I was reminded um, one of our, our um, uh, church staff had, had contracted COVID in, a, in another setting, but uh, the, the contact tracing uh, was taking place and they called one of the folks who was working with New Hampshire's contact tracing called just trying to identify, okay, was this person in our building, you know, on a particular day? And I had to put them on hold for like 10 minutes because I had to go check, you know, yeah. our time cards. And then I had to check uh, our, our uh, screening log. And, and thankfully that person hadn't been in, but, you know, when I got back on and, and told them, you know, she, she had uh, waited um, for that time, but it just really struck me because I work with these details just for our church. It's like, imagine what that's like mm. for a state, right? Mm. Or a city. And I just said to her, I said, hey, you know, thank you for the work that you do and how, because I can only imagine what it is to try to track this stuff across the state. Yeah. And you could tell, like she paused, she said, well, thank you for saying something, <laughs> you know, because there are people who are just, they're trying to care for people trying to do their job and and they're the person that has to call you know do the contact right. tracing but you know that's something where i think that um a caring spirit you know christ-like attitude from believers can really minister to those folks i agree so um governor uh Sununu, i guess was it last week mm -hmm. that he uh, lifted the uh, mask the COVID mask ban in, although a lot of like, like Nashua, a, a lot of places in Nashua still kind of require people to wear their COVID mask, yep. like supermarkets and <laughs> departments. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. they don't want to get away from it. But it's eased up though in like the, uh, for like Merrimack Baptist Church or Merrimack Valley Baptist Church or. Yeah, how, that, how that's uh, transitioning. And of course, the state mask mandate expired. And as Governor Sununu identified, that was, you know, specifically focused on the the uh, fall and I believe the winter surge is what they had concerns over. So, um, yeah, and the, for, for our church, you know, we were looking at that and we're trying to consider both uh, the health questions, but then also just, you know, people questions and how it impacts people. So, you know, we're trying to wisely move forward with, you know, identifying time where people can come. And it's a, you know, mask required uh, service time. And then another time where it's masks are, are optional, um, and, but the social distancing is all still in effect and, and all of those type of mitigation efforts. And, and so, you know, Lord willing, that, uh, that goes well. And, um, so in addition to the church itself, uh, Merrimack Valley Baptist um, also has a K through 12 school. Mm -hmm. 
And um, but you don't really like regulate the COVID um, uh, the protocol for that. They have another. Right. Our school administrator is the primary person with that. He has been part of phone calls with the state. He's you know oh. he um, you know dissects the state's guidance and how to apply that in our current situation. I mean, sometimes you know we'll talk about an idea or bounce it off of uh, each other and. And primarily one thing that we've tried to do uh, for our church, like the Monday through Friday church office and church staff, is we coordinate our COVID guidance with the school's COVID guidance because you know, we're in the same complex. Oh, okay. Okay. So last year when um, President, then President Trump declared the national pandemic, the school closed Oh, well, the um, in-room school that they have Zoom teachings yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they after that. Completely remote, um, yeah. using I think it was Google Classrooms at the time. The teachers really did an amazing job, just yeah. pivoting to okay. completely remote. You know, think of going from never having done that to now it's the only thing that you. <laughs> so you because otherwise wouldn't your kids? I uh, the 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 uh, kids enrolled in your school have to like to stay back a year if they couldn't finish. Well, it, it, that didn't happen, and also it's kind of that that's uh, I mean that that didn't happen. So I don't know the answer to that question. But I will okay. say that that uh, the way the school finished last year, uh, we talk about the unintended. Uh, positive things that have resulted all right so the way that last year ended was everything went to streaming uh so in anticipation for this year uh it was it was uh, understood that the pandemic there's we didn't know when it was gonna you know let up if it was gonna let up what's gonna happen so we actually had an in-person school from day one this year but there were a few families that that were not comfortable uh, so they, they, they had, we had streaming and live so that the teacher would be in the classroom live, but also have a streaming option. So they're for the one or two students in the classroom, they could join in through streaming. And then the, uh, sad probably for most any student is it pretty much did away with snow days. So now oh. in new England, with all the snow, you always have to calculate a certain number of days in for snow days, but now on a moment's notice, and it happened a couple of times yeah. this, this winter where it was, uh, no, snow school is not closed. We go, we just, we literally flip a switch and, and uh, we go to, it's a, it's a uh, remote, remote learning day. Learning day. <laughs> Poor Incredible. <kids. laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, they do take it easy on them. It's not a full day necessarily. I think so thank God this pandemic didn't happen like 20, 25 years ago yeah. before the internet really became popular. Exactly. Mm -hmm. This really would have did a number on like school kids in particular. Yeah. Yeah. And also, they they say that um, well, that being in quarantine for so long, especially with with young kids, mm -hmm. I mean, in, it increases like their depression levels, and they talk about like suicide, drugs, mm -hmm. alcohol. You haven't seen anything like that in the past thirteen, we, fourteen. We haven't seen it, and and even if we had seen it, I wouldn't be able to talk about it. Oh, but I, I would I'm, say, I would say that. Um, I mean, just watching the news and what you can, you could expect that was probably, that's probably a real thing. Yeah. But the other thing we have to recognize is families are more together because of this pandemic too. That's the flip right? side. So yeah. you have parents that are there all the time who knows their kids better than the parents. Right. So I'm hoping that maybe as maybe some of that stuff, when it happened, there were parents uh, involvement quicker, sooner, and may, maybe some things were averted through that i don't know ah uh, but uh, okay. certainly i think it's real i mean the loneliness and stuff i'm sure yeah and well it happens i guess <clears throat> when i forgot about last well, when I, a couple of minutes ago that um when i was w with another church and i was doing like our research on different um um, churches and, fa and facts and stuff like that. Gallup Poll, the Gallup Poll organization, did a, um, a national survey. I think it was 2012 and 2013. So about, I don't know, eight or nine years ago on what was the most religious 
state in the, in the country and what is the least religious state yeah. in the country. Mm -hmm. I think I we talked about this the did. last time. I think we talked Vermont two times ago. was the least religious, right. believe it or not, and New Hampshire yeah. was 49th, right. second to the least. You never know that though no. by going to Merrimack Valley no. Baptist Church. No. No, I, that's that was. I mean, it didn't surprise me that the New England states, you know, scored in that that study the way it did in that poll. Uh, but certainly, it's not my experience. Yeah. I mean, well, well, one one person in the newspaper, I thought I thought they had an excellent thing. I mean, if you compare like New Hampshire with like Alabama and Mississippi, which are, they're they're really uh, they're like second and third, uh, Alabama and Mississippi for the most religious states in the, in the country, mm -hmm. and they were saying that. In New Hampshire, it's easier to get like a good paying job. There's more like a technical industries in New Hampshire mm -hmm. versus really nothing in Alabama and Mississippi, where people really have to pray, pray and believe God that, you know, they, they have the next meal that God's going to provide them the next meal, never mind with a job. Right. Whereas New Hampshire, they kind of take God for granted which may put them down to 49th place. But like I said, going into Merrimack Valley Baptist Church, you never feel, you never get a sense of that. No. Yeah, there's a great variety of folks from, you know, what you'd consider blue collar or white collar type jobs. And, and uh, I, I know, you know, when, when uh, myself and my wife moved here, you know, uh, now about 10 years ago, you know, there was the, cause we moved from um, the mid Atlantic yeah. region and, and it was like, you know, you, you would hear the, oh, well there's, you know, it's cold New England, cold New England, you know? And it's like, we never experienced that no. coming to, to Merrimack Valley. And even with some of our neighbors, you know, it's like, sure, you gotta have some time to get to know them, but they were great. You know, they've been great, yeah. <laughs> you know, great community, so. yeah. Incredible, incredible. Yeah. Yeah. But um, anywho, I think I might have exhausted all my um, the, the scribbled down questions. Is there anything, well, there must be something going on at, at Merrimack Valley Baptist Church other than the pandemic that you could probably tell us what's, give us a heads There's up. There's always something going on. Uh, even okay. in the pandemic, if it, there was plenty going on, even when we were, weren't allowed to do things necessarily in, in close proximity to one another, there's there's always the need to talk about spiritual issues uh, within the church family. So uh, we have been focused in the, in the last year uh, on uh, basically creating a structure within the church to focus upon discipleship. I mentioned that the last time we were yeah, together. Yeah, you did. Uh, and so that continues. Uh, we did not expect that uh, the pandemic would, would necessarily, well, again, I, I can't say we expected it would last long. Nobody knew. Yeah. Uh, but we have continued to uh, uh, emphasize uh, the, the, the steps, the dis discover, believe, connect, serve, multiply, those five stages of discipleship that I talked to you about. So we've continued to con develop aspects of that. We have, uh, we have started uh, we've restarted uh, some adult Sunday school uh, on both in person and online. Uh, we've started um, a children's ministries. We, the one children's ministry we do not have yet is a nursery. Uh, there's oh. and that so that's the that's the demographic within our church body and probably many church bodies that has suffered. I would say the most because you have to have uh, adult leaders to to serve within the nursery. How do you keep kids at you know at the very young ages? How do you keep them effectively socially distanced from one another? And yet the the workers have they can't be socially distanced. They have to care for the children. So we haven't had a nursery, uh, a formal nursery, in over a year. Uh, that's not good, right? That and no. that and that impacts a group of people. And so uh, so we have tried. We did. We have done some online things. We have, for instance, as you would know, we have a. Uh, you know, and it was common in years ago, at least in military chapel settings where I grew up, because my dad was in the military, that you would have these these moments for the kids. They would walk down to the front of the church, and and the the pastor or someone would would speak uh, uh, a children's lesson, and then they would go off to junior church or something like that. 
So Oasis started to do, a, 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 it's, it's a video. Our, our uh, pastor over the youth does a video every week. It's called Ricky the Rat. And, uh, and okay. people love Ricky. And, but he speaks to the kids. And so that's our little children's church within church, trying to minister to that demographic in our church. And we've, we've received many, many emails and phone calls of encouragement saying thank you for that because it, it enables their children to not lose touch with church life. Um, so they they can they can actually experience oh Ricky's coming and there's a, a a little lesson for them and but we're hoping that as we move forward and as more people are vaccinated and and more leaders are are, are able to step into the role that we're going to be able to increase some of these other ministries that have not been able to continue. So as it stands now, women with infants mm -hmm. that either have to like change the, the infant mm -hmm. or like nurse them or something like yeah. that, is there facilities in the church for that? Uh, well, and we have, certainly there is a system for uh, people to attend uh, to go to the restrooms and, you know, and, and there's, oh, there's, we have one of those stations. changing yeah, and stations, change stations in there. And, and, uh, but we have ushers and, and deacons who are, are very you know, helpful in terms of directing where people go, how many are there, um, so that we, we, we're not creating uh, close contact uh, inadvertently. Okay. Well, one thing I, I just uh, remembered that I had scribbled down. Um, one aspect of your church across the street from where you're at is IBM Global Missionaries. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, is that part of Merrimack Valley Baptist Church, or is that like a separate entity? It's, it is a, a mission organization that has, it was uh, birthed, in a sense, through Merrimack Valley Baptist Church. It's still technically a ministry of the church, although they have a global focus, whereas the church is more focused on, on the community as well as New England. Um, but yes, they're, they're technically a part of our ministry. And so... Um how does the pandemic feel? Okay, like um, I had a, a young lady on, on here, um, Esther Clement from the South Sudan. Is there still a missionary program in South Sudan? Uh, they have, like uh, Esther and the team that she's part of, they're actually uh, in Uganda now with refugees from South Sudan because things blew up in South Sudan, I think even before the pandemic. And so they they moved just in order to be able to to minister and and really they kind of moved with the community that that was there so that they could stay connected. So I would assume like a country like Uganda or if they like had missionaries in Mexico, I don't know, but th they would still have COVID in both those countries. Sure, yeah. So she, I would take and I would assume her and her group have to wear the COVID mask just like. Yeah, I don't know. Oh. I haven't heard any specific updates about no, like, what they're facing, but definitely, you know, we hear from, you know, the missionary families that we support uh, as a church and as well as that IBM Global um, cares for that, you know, it's you have uh, folks in France, Austria, um, Germany, folks in in, um, the, you know, African countries, folks even, you know, farther east and things and and it's, you know, they're, they're responding to COVID many times in similar ways. Sometimes their, their restrictions are even, you know, stronger than here. Um, but one thing, you know, that I've con consistently heard back from several of them, you know, that they've found um, that the online, you know, going online with like their church service or a Bible study or something like that has actually allowed them to connect with more people in their area than when they were open and, and mm -hmm. could be together physically. Um, and, you know, it was really, and, and it was even probably from my sense of it, it's an even greater response than what we could, we could gauge here. We certainly have had it, but they've definitely seen, you know, a, a more significant increase like in European countries and things like that missionaries that we have where people are asking questions and, and uh, attending and then, when Amazing. they hear the the truth of you know salvation by faith alone through Jesus Christ, that 
they'll put their trust in, in Jesus Christ alone for the forgiveness of their sins. Okay, one thing I want to bounce off you too that I just found in my um, my notes here. Um, innovation, is there like, you, you mentioned that you have like minister friends that you do to rub elbows with every now and again. Is there any like innovative ways they're working in the pandemic? like different from Merrimack Valley Baptist Church that you may or may not want to adopt for your own church if the pandemic goes on? Um, uh, I can't year. say. I mean, I, for the most part, the creativity that's taking place is uh, because of social distancing, because of limitations, you're going to have a larger online presence. Uh, what we have, we, we were streaming services before the pandemic ever came. So we were we would stream Sunday services, but we didn't stream Wednesday night, uh, and we didn't stream other we didn't stream Bible studies and everything. So as a result of the pandemic, the online presence is what has changed the most. Uh, I'm not sure if there we have talked about some creative ideas moving forward, even from this point forward of of how we can do some things. Most people are interested in going back to the way it was. All right, not just in our church, I'm sure in many churches. Whereas, like, can we just get back to the old way of doing things? So that's going to be, and as as the pandemic reduces and and things do go back to where we could go normal, it's going to be very interesting to see how people respond to the old way of doing things and and what's going to stay in in as a result. Right? For instance, I, you know, in our previous conversations in your email mentions, you know, well, I continue to do the prayer time and the devotions. I have no I have I have always wanted to do an early morning prayer time. But the thought of getting 15, 20 people to a church that they live 15, 20 minutes away to drive in and then pray for a few minutes and then go off to their to their places of employment, it just didn't sound like it was really likely to last very long. But now we get up and at 6.30 in the morning, you know, people are probably, I'm showered and ready to go, but there's probably people watching from their bed, in, eating their <laughs> cereal, whatever, in their PJs, you know, and, uh, and, but people have said, can we continue this? You know, so there's, going back to, I think that online presence is really the big thing that you're going to see. Um, but it's, uh, I think there's a lot more that we're going to see to ask questions about in the near future as to what is the old does the old start again? You know? Yeah. <laughs> I can think of just, you know, thinking of that creativity in, in this time. And and the church I grew up in uh, was just a small country church in Michigan. And, uh, you know, it, we didn't have high technology or anything as I was growing up. Uh, they probably got internet to the church building maybe four years ago, five years ago, you know, uh, for the first time ever. And, and I just, uh, I remember, you know, when they were going into COVID and my family's still there. So I was talking to my dad, but, you know, he's like, well, you know, the pastor's going to Facebook live from his phone, <laughs> you know, and 70 years old, you know, or whatever. I don't know if he'd ever Facebook lived before, but here's a way, you know, that, that yeah. now they have a new avenue into just the community and people can connect with them and, and uh, gives them that opportunity uh, to, to reach out in a greater way that probably they they wouldn't have done if it wasn't for having to adjust to COVID, you know, and similarly for us at, at Merrimack Valley, you know, where just the breadth of things, you know, that we're doing. And I think of, you know, with with like Ricky the Rat and the puppets and, you know, now there's a whole team of people who are doing puppets together and they <laughs> they record a video every week and they do you know the puppets for for in-person children's church as well you know on sundays but they're they're engaging their gifts they're caring for others and and just you know they're having fun while they're doing it yep, you know being creative uh, no, one thing um this may sound like a, a silly type question but it, it seems like like the TV ministers and that, that I watch I mean you know I probably should get out of that habit um eventually but they <laughs> they look at it like i i don't know they they're glad they're sort of glad that a, a thing like the the a pandemic um, COVID-19 has taken place. They're saying, because when God gets the glory out of this, there's going to be like a zillion people 
um, you know, coming to, uh, you know, coming to the Lord as a result of this. And I, I'm just saying that, like, you're an army guy, and you you look at like um, generals and admirals that like um, like I well I'm an I'm an Air Force guy, and I'm I'm a peacetime veteran. The four years, the four year stint I had, I was I was not in a war. Mm-hmm. I was peacetime, so I, I feel kind of guilty when people uh, uh, commend me for my service to my country. No, don't 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 feel bad. Don't feel awkward. No, you serve. But, your but as a minister, yeah. would you feel awkward if you didn't have like a nine eleven or a, a national pandemic to minister to people? Or the hunky dory years, like 2019, for example, where there was no pandemic. You probably had a, a, just as much activity then in 2019 as you do right now. On I, went, I don't know exactly how to respond, but I'm gonna. This is what's on okay. my heart. Okay, oh, right, sure. I'll just share it this way: is the gospel has been going forth since the resurrection of Jesus Christ. There has been. Wars, there has been famine, there's been all kinds of horrible things. One nation over con- conquering many other nations. We have empires, and yet the 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 church has thrived. Um, and and even if you go back to, to the book of Acts where Stephen was persecuted and 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 the church, you know, they were afraid, so they scattered. What did they bring with them? The gospel and the gospel spread has spread throughout the whole world. So whether it's the pandemic of COVID nineteen, whether it's the the wars that have been taking place, whether the there is always lack of security in this world because of everything we've already talked about, and yeah. and um, and people these things will this is just the flavor for our life. You know, other people had World War One, World War Two, yeah. Vietnam, uh, the Black Plague, and you know these different things throughout life, and and so. Uh, every generation will have those things that get their attention. And, and that's because as we think about God, he transcends all of this, right? And he will bring everything into completion and consummation. He will, uh, sin will be done away with for forever. And, and so I'm just saying the church is going to thrive no matter what the context, no matter what the government, no matter that, that Christianity, Christianity is thriving under communist China. Uh, and it may be waning in in you know in our nation you know because of the freedom that we have and the and the peace that we have we don't need God as much as we've already talked about yeah so uh, when when you, I think there's a lot of positives that have come out over the last year in terms of the church understands it's the church and it needs to be the church in this world there are people that have discovered the church and when I say discovered the church I'm not discovering Jesus Christ and, and yeah. being. Um, I think the concerns moving forward over the couple of minutes we have left, concerns moving forward are, are uh, Christians becoming complacent in their online viewing of, of church, right? So I know there's certain uh, TV uh, pastors out there that might be thankful. And I don't want to cast dispersion on them because I don't know who they are, All right? right? But I, I, I will say that online church is not God's ideal, but it certainly has helped us continue but we're told in, in, in uh, Hebrews 10, 24 and 25, don't forsake the assembling together of believers, as is the habit of some, right? We are supposed to be in community. And this is one of the big tensions that's taken place within the church community is, why aren't we able to get together? We need to get together, right? Uh, and we are getting together. It's just not everybody as we have been. So it's altered. But the, the question is going to be, when we are able to get together, are, is everybody going to come back together again? You know, uh, so we're going to have to encourage uh, our community to make sure. No, we need to be back in fellowship, in personal, face to face, you know, hug to hug, you know, presence together. You know, I remember back when we first started having in person services. I remember one of our deacons just sharing. He's like, you know, I realized he was like, boy, I, you know, it's just easier to get up and. I can be in my PJs and have my cereal and I don't have to worry about the kids type of a thing. But then he he caught himself and he said, no, I, I need to be yeah. out in. to, yeah, to the, the community with other believers. And and they were, you know, one of the first families who yeah. started regularly coming. Yeah. And um, and that was I, you know, I appreciated that because, you know, 
what Greg's hitting on there with Hebrews 10, it's, it's, you know, that we need to be together because we're called to provoke one another to love and good works, Mm -hmm. right. And to, to challenge sin so that we don't become, become um, blinded by our own sinfulness because, you know, I have blind spots and I don't always see things. And of course, while uh, I'm a pastor and I've been, you know, uh, a believer for most of my, you know, uh, uh, well, most of my life really as a kid, yeah. I got saved as a young kid, but, but um, I'm great at justifying things. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes I can use the Bible to do it. Right. But that's when I need, other, why I need other people around right. me who know me and who see Dave on a Sunday, Dave interacting with his yeah. kids, Dave interacting with his wife, because if I'm on the other side of the screen, that's a very safe place for Dave, right? It's also a very dangerous place, right? Yeah. Because Greg's not going to be there and say, hey, Dave, you, you're kind of a jerk to your wife. Man. <laughs> How is that Christ-like? And yeah. so we can challenge each other. In love, yeah, in love, yeah. yeah. So that there's that there's relationship there, but so that I'm just not left to my own to my own self, right? Right. Because one, again, that's a safe place, like I say, but that's a dangerous place too. Because I'm my own best cheerleader, <laughs> but that's not necessarily what I need. That's right. Right. I yeah. need people to love me even when it's hard. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. yeah. It's really true. So we need to pray for churches. We need to pray for churches that they'll continue to be vigilant through the pandemic, however long it's going to last. And then when we step back and, and, and we're free to gather and, and, you know, one, that we'll still love one another in every way possible, mm-hmm. but that we will, because uh, church is not just about, it's not about self going to church. It's about self being among other selves and interrelating with one another. That's what it's Caring. all about. And caring, for those yeah, and caring for others, yeah. It's not a it's not a consumerist mentality when you go to church. It's a it's a servant mentality, serving others and loving others. Uh, ah, yeah. so anyway, um, we're out of time. Well, I know time <laughs> flies when you're having fun. Yeah, my um, my producer says we have just over a minute left. So I just want to say, if this show has been a blessing to you, ladies and gentlemen, um, please log on to um, mvbc.org. Excellent. Or I put the other one on um, for YouTube. If you want to check out the morning devotionals or the uh, lunchtime devotionals weekdays, that would be um, an MVBC, a second word media. Yep. And, um, and you can subscribe to that. Yeah. If you subscribe to it, those things usually come up on YouTube. Yeah, we'd love to have you. So, yeah. and check Thank it you. out. Yeah. Definitely. Stuff. Thank you, Frank. Yeah, we'll have to do this again sometime. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Sometime after your summer vacations. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. I'm only yeah. kidding. Yeah. So um, again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us and join us again um, soon for another episode of Frankly Speaking. Thank you. Proceeding program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.